eVTOL is not just a thing for the future, it's happening right now. And here at the Paris Air Show 2023, we have seen the Volo City behind me taking to the sky and wowing the crowds. And to find out more, I have the CEO of Volocopter right next to me, Dirk Hoke. It's great to see you here, and it's great to see these things taken to the sky. Yeah, and it's the most important thing is it's happening next year. It's not happening 35 or so. So people are still believing it's, it's far away, and it's a reality. You, you see it here flying, and you will see it flying next year in summer here in Paris in, in a commercial operation mode. This is the model that is almost the size that we will fly next year in Paris. We, we will start um, the flight testing with the model that will fly in Paris next month in July in our headquarters. And yeah, we are happy to uh, hopefully be back here next year for the Olympic Games and start commercial operation with our partner ADP. Now, as I said at the top there, when we look at eVTOL, we always think of oh, this, this distance thing that we can't actually touch at the moment. So it's great to see these things in the sky. We know there's a lot of technological advancements that have happened to get it to this stage, and it's got to go a long way before it becomes a, a regular occurrence in our skies. What's the challenge been like for you over the last few years to get to where we are now with the Volo City? As you said, you need to do intensive testing. It's not you just design something and then you fly and then you certify. Um, the founders started 2011. The first uh, ever electric uh, VTOL flight, uh, are, it, it was still on a yoga ball. They, they constructed it themselves, but it became, uh, it went absolutely viral. And then they, two years later, they had the first uh, small aircraft flying. And then from 2013 to now, it is stepped through several prototypes in order now go to the conforming aircraft. So it's, it's not a walk in the park. Um, we, you also need to be certified. So we have a design organization approval. We have a production organization approval, which allows us also to design and build aircraft that can fly in the civil airspace. What is the significance? of being able to see these things fly. Now, I think from a public point of view, we're going to be becoming more used to them, and that's, that's a good part there. But we've got to understand, we've got to trust them, haven't we, as well. But they've also got to have a good price point for the generic user, the general public out there to use. How far away are we from that end goal of saying, I, rather than me hopping in a, a taxi and driving somewhere, I could hop in one of these? I think, uh, uh, to be realistic, I think that for the first two years, we will subsidize uh, the ticket price. But starting the third year, we can operate the vehicle at a competitive pricing that will allow the normal person on the street to buy a ticket and to have it as an alternative to, to uh, taxis and other modalities. It's an amazing thing, it's amazing to see as well. And for yourselves being here in Paris and revealing it, what was the, the impetus behind that? No, because uh, we believe that uh, a city that has like 50 million tourists every year is of course uh, uh, very critical to have efficient transportation yeah. and uh, we believe that we will not replace anything but we can add another option for, for tourists and people that live in the city to gain some time, a quality time of our life and uh, be in a, in a competitive price arena it will of course very fast scale. So this is what I say will happen from 26 onwards. We will see in many cities of this world, we will see these kind of vehicles. We will see that uh, people understand them better because it's like when you see it here for the first time because people in, in expect that it would be a very loud vehicle because it looks a bit like a helicopter. Yeah. So you associate automatically a similar um, level of, of noise and of course you're also afraid. Um, and in every aspect, the aircraft will be better. It's, uh, it's a friction of the noise level of a helicopter. It's uh, 100 to 1,000 times safer than a helicopter based on the redundancy of the propulsion system. And it's sustainable. It's fully electric. And uh, we will also work on the circular economy. So it's not only saying flying batteries is, is the solution. No, of course, we will look at the circular economy of the battery. We will look at uh, how do we charge the batteries. And, but we also have to be um, honest with ourselves. We are a startup. We start step by step. But once we go into the larger production, it's very easy to achieve these parameters. Yeah. It's great to see the evolution of how these things are changing in their appearance. And they look very, very cool. And they're very, very cool themselves. And it's exciting. It's a very exciting time as well to be alive, to see these things coming into existence. So, Dirk, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much for having me.